All righty oh. Hello, hello. Hey, today, we got, so, so if today, we got, today we got Blue Pac-Man in the house, a.k.a. Jonathan. How are you doing, buddy? Doing good. Can you hear me? Oh. Yeah, you're really good. Um, I wanted to have a video, a live stream with you, just because I think uh, you have a lot to say. You've done uh, a lot of research, made many videos, and uh, all good quality. You've you've uh, done your research. You've looked into things. You've dug into past videos. What's out there on the uh, on, on on the world wide web, and uh, you're able to gather information. Now, um, Jonathan, like. Why don't you just give us a brief introduction on how you got involved into the Mandela effect? Yeah, so um, for me, you know, it started a long time ago when I was six years old. Um, it was uh, the year 2000, and um, it, it was uh, at a private school uh, I used to go to called Rainbow Montessori. And um, there, was a, there was a class, you know, and the teacher had us read uh, the Berenstein Bears books. And uh, the teacher would have each student read a, seg a segment of the book and, you know, they would go around the class and then, you know, I'd be, you know, doing a piece and a section of it too. Uh, and this would go on for about a week or two or, or three. And uh, that's how I came to know the familiarity of the book. And I became, you know, like, um, attached to it and uh, that's how I knew it as Baron Steen Bears um, and then uh, actually like it was in the year 2000 and uh, that's when I saw it as Baron Stain Bears for the first time as a six-year-old as a six-year-old uh, kid you know and I'm like wow that is that is really weird um, you know but uh, I kind of like brushed it off a little bit because you know as a kid uh, you don't really feel like talking to you know to the other kids about this kind of like weird uh feeling that you have or a weird like uh anomaly that you have seen take place so i kind of just left it on the back burner for for a while until like 2016 that's when this whole thing blew up on the internet and i found out that i'm not the only one that remembers that uh, so as a kid what, what year was that when you first noticed it it was the year 2000. so you you notice Baron Stein turn into Baron Stein in the year 2000, over 23 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, you might be the first person to notice that Mandela effect change. What do you yeah. think? No, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think I'm the first. Uh, the way this, I don't know, the way time works, it's, it, it's like time's thrown out the window. So I don't, I don't think I'm the first one to uncover it. Uh, you know, I, I think um, people see it at different times, and I don't know if there could be a first person who sees a change. That's a that's interesting. That's an interesting uh, thought. You know, like who's who's the first one to see it? But uh, I know I saw it, and I and another one at that time was um, objects in mirror may be closer than they appear. Uh, I used to go to school every morning. You know, my mom would drive me to school uh, in the Grand Prix, and I would see. You know, because, you know, when you're going to school as a kid, you know, you're bored, you know, in the backseat, you know, you're looking around, you're just observing your surroundings, you know, and I would see the side view mirror, you know, right there and then say objects in mirror may be closer than they appear. Um, and then I would always question myself, are the objects in the mirror closer or are they not? And so I would have this anchor question, this anchor memory of a question in my mind as a kid asking that question in the car on the way to school. Um, that that stays with me, you know. That that, that is like a, an anchor. So I know what I saw is what I saw, you know. So it's kind Isn't of that crazy that these things have changed, like literally changed. Isn't that yeah? It, it that's the, yeah, man. It gets uh, it's hard to wrap your mind around it, you know. It's like not just on like one mirror or like two mirrors or five mirrors created in a factory somewhere that. You know, someone, you know, thinks that has changed based on the factories uh, production wise, making things differently. But no, like thousands and thousands of mirrors have changed. Yeah, yeah it's a, 
It's, it's, it's pretty mind blowing. I mean, I think once I first uh, realized that we don't live in this concrete reality, I mean, that just blows my mind. You know, I've been taught growing up that, you know, like you put something here, it'll stay there. <laughs> until someone else moves it, you know? Right, um, yeah, exactly, yeah. And it's not going to change. It's not going to change. But we realize that we live in this fluid type of ever always changing reality. Yeah. And to realize that is like, wow. Like, so you mean like the thinker statue, like, like metal can change, like, like from... <laughs> from here to to here like and not just one thinker statue all of them yeah i mean that's yeah i guess with that one it's kind of you know it's tough to bring up to a you know a person who hasn't like dived into this subject but uh yeah it's definitely like uh fluid like you were saying and it's kind of like a like a dream type of reality where you know like in a dream you can kind of like see stuff morph in your dream. You can kind of almost create it to be a certain way or something else is creating it to be a certain way. And it's, you know, it's like fluid, like you said. So it's, it's kind of very dreamlike changes, but we can't really witness it in real time though. That's the weird part, right? Like we can't witness in real time and, and take a picture or a, a live feed of the thinker statue and see it morph um it's almost like we get to it after the fact that it's already changed so there's that whole aspect of it it's very strange now do you believe that everybody on this planet should be aware of the mandela effect or has a capability to understand what this is um, a lot of people i i tell you know they say oh you know like you know Ber bernstein has changed the bernstein or or anything that I can catch them with, any Mandela effect that I can catch them with. And then they just kind of brush it off. Hey, what's for lunch? What's dinner? You know, like, so I, I just feel like some people can get it and other, and most people, uh, when you try to explain or show to them um, the change, they'll just brush it off. And, and why do you think that is? Yeah, I think, you know, some people like, they have, well, if, you, know, you can look at it multiple ways, you know, like one aspect you can look at it, these people have hobbies in their lives and they really like to do certain things and they're really like in that world of their hobby or their passion, or whatever it is. And then when you bring this up to them, they kind of like, they see it, but then they shut down right away because their, their whole reality is built on something else that they have given their energy to and their passion to. Uh, you can kind of see it that way, but then you can also see it other ways, like, you know, like with me and, you know, me and Brian were talking about where some people, you know, might not be um, people. Like there could be like Agent Smith in this reality where they're not um, human spirit like you and I, but they're representations of humans where they're like a test for us or a stepping stone for us or some type of um you know like a like a you know basically trying to help us get through this reality in some way but it seems like they might hinder us too sometimes but what if we're not looking at it in the right way and it's actually trying to help us so um there's like you know these different um groups and classifications of you know what we think an npc is you know um you know there's like you know like us you know we're talking about this and we're more open-minded and then there's other people who aren't so open-minded about it and they're either have something else consuming their energy in their lives that's getting in the way. But then there's also the other side where it's like, you know, there could be a, a good and evil going on and the evil side wants to blind people from this, from the supernatural uh, truth of this realm that we're living in. And so they blind them with all the, you know, all the, you know, like you become a great singer, you can become a millionaire, you know, you, be, you can become anything you want, you know, but it, it almost in that sense, it kind of blinds people to 
you know, thinking about what this reality is and um, the being blind to the, you know, the supernatural, what's going on, the good versus, you know, the good versus evil. So there's a, that's another thing, uh, you know, that's going on in this reality is there's a good positive energy going around and you can tell that there's the other energy going around as well. And, uh, you know, it's, it's very, uh, it's very apparent, you know, if, if you have eyes to see and ears to hear, you can, you could definitely feel it. So you believe that there are these Asian Smith non-human like people that are trolling this place we live on. It could be um, you know, like a like a demonic spirit that is manifesting itself as a human, but is not really a, a human. Like you can't find any uh, birth certificates or whatever. Or if you could find a birth certificate, it'd be counterfeit. It'd all be made up. It would be to cover its tracks, you know. So it's it's very. It'd be the theory is it's it's you know it's a very uh, uh, com complicated you know, but it's uh, it's where the the spirit realm manifests itself in the physical, kind of like uh, in some religions like Shintoism, where the spiritual realm and the physical realm are one. So it's it's kind of in those veins a little bit where the spiritual can manifest itself as a physical object which shows you know the fluid nature of this reality too in, in a sense uh just by that respect but um but it's all just you know a theoretical you know that that i've been thinking about you know the whole npc theory yeah so based on M the whole npc theory your your conclusion is that uh, these are not human beings they are uh demonic spirits that exist on this place there yeah that's the that's the that's one section of the theory um of like of the whole theory and so basically you have you know this whole population that we're living on uh, in this stationary plane where you have you know real humans like you and i who were created by the creator and you have other people that were created by the creator who are the normies who are just you know in the world and they're you know they're starting to understand what's going on with this reality and they're starting to wake up some are not waking up some are going the other direction um but they're still like you and i they're created by the creator so you know that not really an npc but it's like a person who still hasn't woken up yet but what i think an npc is uh is you know within that same reality you know where we are and where the normies are is this little uh, one third, I don't want to call it one third or whatever ratio, but it's a little chunk where there's these NPCs where they're not really like, they're not human like you and I, uh, and they could spawn into existence, uh, at any point. And you, I don't know if you ever had that happen to you where it's like, uh, this person came out of nowhere. It's like, I just checked and looked over my shoulder. There was nobody there. And then like a split second, like a half a second, somebody's there. It's like, how did that happen? You know, like where, where did that person come from? Is that a real person? You know, so you, you are, you know, start asking your questions like what's going on here. So that's the, the gist of the theory. Hmm. Wow. See th this information uh, for you listening, this might be the first time hearing this and you're saying, what these two guys are, are saying that uh, uh, our reality is not, concrete um it's fluid it's always changing um metal can change uh metal can form into different things um npcs out there there are people that aren't really people but <laughs> demonic spirits trying to weigh us down uh trying to distract us or or uh trying to cover up what this true place is now let's say let's say they are agent smiths right and they want to deny the mandela effect why why would they want to deny the mandela effect why would they want to misdirect you uh, misdirect anybody who's seeking truth um what's in it for them well i think that maybe one of the reasons why they would want to hide the mandela effect from the public would be that it brings you closer to the creator. I think it, you know, I really think that with the Mandela effect, it's basically showing you that there's more than this physical reality and that because there's more than this physical reality, 
you have to open your mind to the possibility that there is a creator and that he is looking down or wherever he is, he's, he's looking on us and he's, uh, he's, you know, he's in, you know, in control. Um, while, you know, we still have free will, you know, and whatnot. But uh, I think what they're trying to do is trying to hide the supernatural, but really they're trying to hide God from the people. They're, they're trying to not make it so where they can have that, epiphany where like oh wow there is uh there is a supernatural realm there is a spiritual realm there is a spirit realm and god exists in that spirit realm so they're trying to hide god from people and more importantly they're trying to sever a relation a relationship with god um they, they really don't like that they they don't like ha people knowing about god and knowing that where we live is not you know like what they tell us what nasa tells us and all that so they definitely want to hide that truth uh, because they want to keep people stuck in a lie um it's yeah it, it goes back you know to uh it's more of a point it's more of like a you know biblical prophecy or a, a bible point of view that kind of view where uh you know like a one third of the angels fell from heaven and they were cast down here into this, you know, this plane or stationary realm where, you know, they have their little time to rule and whatnot. And they're trying to get people to not see God and not see the truth that, um, that, you know, he is real, that you know, it's real. Um, they want to keep people in evolution, atheism, um, insignificance you know they want to keep people down in a low vib vibrational energy um, and they don't want people to get to that higher vibration that positive energy they, they don't want that now have you always been spiritual and believed in god or um, was it a process for you to get to this point um for me man when i when i started um having those questions about like if there's a creator or not uh it was um it was in you know it was in elementary it was like uh kindergarten kind of a little bit because i used to be you know i was i was really into art you know and i still am and uh, i used to draw a lot i used to um, draw Yu-Gi-Oh cards um so basically i'd have a Yu-Gi-Oh card here and then i'd be like you know drawing it trying to get it like perfect you know trying to get the detail right so i try to get as accurate as possible and so um how that blended into like thinking okay what if there's a creator it was you know uh, i'm doing all this artwork you know and i'm creating this artwork i'm a creator creating this artwork well then uh if i'm an artwork who created me you know so i had these like questions when i was a kid like that and that slowly built to the you know like is there a god you know and i didn't know what the word god was when i was a kid or what our creator was. i didn't know what the word creator meant i was just thinking these thoughts like you know, like, what about me? You know, like, who, who sat down and created me or you or anybody, you know? So I had those thoughts when I was young. Now you, uh, you're really into scripture, uh, Mandela effects, Bible changes. You, uh, the, the first video I posted in our intro was uh, your video um, with John MacArthur uh, speaking on Isaiah 11, 6. And guess what? Um, in college, I went to that church, that specific church. So that's why it hits home, that video for me and why I post it. Yeah. Um, and I was one of them who sat in the pews listening to John MacArthur. I mean, he's very smart. He's very, you know, his Bible knowledge is very exhaustive. He has his own Bible. I mean, he... Uh, his Bible commentary, and uh, we would all have it, and you know, and we would open it, and we would read out of it. And for somebody so smart, so knowledgeable of the Bible, such as John MacArthur, he is like one of the, uh, the 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 biggest leaders in like the the Protestant churches nowadays. Uh, him and John Piper, um, a few other ones that uh, that I know of. So if they are mixing that scripture up, not only that one, um, but others as well, 
Um, do you think they're hiding it? Do you think they know? Do you think they're just, they just take the update and they just, I mean, they're really yeah. smart. They, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm, I, I'm confused. Like, uh, what is that? What is their excuse or their, what is their reason on, on, on saying I, um, the lion shall dwell with the lamb, you know, when it's yeah. not, so what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I, I don't I don't think they know. Um, I don't think anybody has like uh, brought it to their awareness yet. Um, you know, I think uh, if someone were to bring it to their awareness, that'd be interesting to see what would happen. I don't want to like, you know, uh, you know, say what would happen. But uh, um, I noticed, you know, um, just through generally, I noticed, you know, a lot of the pastors don't seem to uh, take kindly to the Mandela effect. They seem to uh, almost shut down and they revert to, the, you know, like the word can't change and whatnot. So they're really holding on to the physical word um, as their source of truth. And I think with the Mandela effect through the creator, it's showing that you don't really need uh, to focus your, you know, on a physical book that you should focus more on the spiritual word, which is the creator, you know which is, you know, the word, the word of God, capital W. Um, but they're so focused on the lowercase w, word of God, the lowercase w being the book. Uh, and the Mandela effect, it's showing, you know, that we need to graduate higher from that and we need to have a relationship with the source uh, as opposed to a physical book. I think that's for a few of us maybe we came down to this place in this lifetime to uncover truths um, things that have been hidden from us and that is our goal and our mission in life but i think for many other people i don't think that's what they chose i think they choose to uh, focus on other things in life uh, maybe their family or their careers or I don't know, but truth ain't part of it. Um, whether they're part of a church or not. Um, and I think for me, I had to come to a, a peace with that. That some people aren't just meant, aren't meant to uncover truth or even understand it or even want to even go down that path or a route. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, but we are, you know, that's that's our mission. That's our goal. And that's why we like to do the digging. Um, that's why we like to, you know, follow certain people on YouTube, um, listening to live streams of what other people have uncovered. Um, I just feel like sometimes, like, maybe I, maybe I just, just let them, let them be, you know, like, tell them, but if uh if they don't respond positively just let them be um I'm my best friend who brought me to church when i was a kid um very spiritual very religious and uh, i brought up you know some of these verses to him that have changed i have forwarded um john MacArthur, you know um uh, and other pastors saying lying in the lamb and then pointing to him and my friend saying hey look look at isaiah eleven six. it no longer says that and his response was oh like he just chuckles it off you know like just oh so <laughs> i i can't explain it i can't explain why he's not ruffled um over this like like he's not losing sleep over it like if it's supposed to be such a big thing in his heart for him scripture the word of god truth right growing going to church we we're taught that um the bible was inerrant you know what that means blue pac man yeah inerrant yep without inerrant, word of god. Yep. without error inerrant yep perfect perfect that's what we were taught and then to find out that it has changed Bro, that's yeah, kind of 
paradigm as a Christian. Yeah, and even if you don't want to look at it uh, Mandela wise, you just want to look at it, you know, the regular way of looking at it. Uh, there's a lot of versions of the Bible that have different words in it already. So, in a sense, it's already been changed. Uh, it's just different words, different letters. It's it's changed in a way already. So, uh, but the, I don't see how they can't take it to that next step where it's a supernatural cause. I think that's the you know, in the right time, they might wake up to it. Maybe not now, but maybe there's a timing. There's a timing factor where certain people have to wake up at a certain time. Like maybe, you know, there's like a, like God's will. It has to be done in such a way where it's, it has to be like, they, they wake up at a specific time. You know, I thought about that too, as well. Like you can't just, they can't just all wake up all at once. Maybe there's a, a timing factor, but yeah. My biggest Bible scripture Mandela effect, um, the one that hits home for me is um, wineskins. How, um, you know, it's, it used to say that uh, we ought not, I am paraphrasing, but uh, we ought not to pour what new wine into old wineskins. And I believe there's a Mandela effect message behind that. Um, but I'll let, I'll let you decide what that is for yourself. Yeah. Um, but uh, that's huge. Yeah. Um, because that's the only place in the Bible where I remember reading about wineskins. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, I remember that too as well, lest the wineskins burst. But now it says bottles. Uh, you know, so it it's very, very strange, you know, it's like, how can a, you know, bottle burst, you know, from that? And, and, and other versions, it says mar, and the word mar is to be like disformed. Well, how can you disform a bottle? It's either going to crack, you know, it's going to crack, or you're just going to make a little scratch on it. But, you know, you can't dent or mar a bottle. So, you know, it, it's showing it's, it's almost like a little bit of like a hint of residue right there with the word with the word mar you know like you can't mar a bottle you know it's it's ridiculous you know and that verse has taught me that you know it's a new time like the and the mandela effect tells me also like every day is new it's, nothing's ever the same you know yeah like I mean, like this reality is always updating. It's always morphing. It's always changing. Therefore, I can't have the same mentality or beliefs that I did a year ago. I shouldn't. And that's what the verse, uh, you know, with the wineskins has taught me. We ought to have new wineskins, new ways of believing, new thoughts, new paradigms. We can't be sticking to the same thing 10 years ago, 20 years ago. Truth, which is weird, right, will change. <laughs> like, I mean, at, at least your your perspective of truth, your understanding of truth should change. Right, yeah, so it's kind of like you, you don't want to you don't want to be stuck in that stagnation. It's kind of like a pond, you know, where the pond's not moving and it's just sitting there. It's going to you know, it's going to get bacteria, it's going to get algae, it's going to start forming all these bad things, you know, that's not healthy for for the ecosystem or for, you know, a human consumption or animal consumption. But when you get like a river flowing, you know, through it, and it's moving and it's going forward, then, you know, it cleanses it from all the bacteria, from all the fungi, it makes it healthy again, it makes it more lively again, when you have that running flow as you're, you know, as you're, as you're moving. So, you know, that's another, that's why also I like, you know, one of Bruce Lee's quotes, you know, be, be water, be water, my friend, like, that's a very good quote, you know, be water, be, you know, move, it can flow or it can crash, you know, but you want to, you want to keep moving, you don't want to stay stagnant. Exactly. And I think uh, for many of people in the truth community, they stick to past lies, you know, and I get it, you know, they've uncovered truths. Uh, however, they've uncovered lies, right? Or is it truths? I don't know. Uh, 
but they've uncovered things and they, but they stick to the past they stick to the past they stick to the past and they don't evolve they don't move on they don't uh they don't upgrade they don't they don't uh they don't elevate they just stay in the same spot and that breeds uh i think just complacency uh in life um and i i I don't want that for myself, you know. I'm. A, I always want to. I always want to be learning. I always want to think of, you know, okay, what's next after mm -hmm. I've uncovered this? Like, now what? Um, and we're we're never gonna get to that end truth spot, right? Because there's always gonna be things to uncover, and and that's why I love the community that I'm in. Um, you know, we can bounce off ideas with each other. You know what I'm saying? Like before YouTube, like no way could I do much research um, for myself uh, and uncover things that I needed to know. Um, but now, I mean, now that we have um, people, um, we have you, we have Brian, we have so many people who want to talk about these things. Um, it's very very uplifting for me knowing that and it's and, and it makes it very fresh uh, but i always have to remind myself okay you know i'm not gonna stick only with 9 11. you know i can't just stick with uh what happened three years ago um uh, i i gotta i gotta evolve i gotta change i gotta move and uh and with the mandela effect there's always new ones to uncover there's always new ones that will hit you even personal Mandela effects, ones that hit home for me, like, but the thing is, I have to be the one who is aware. I have to be the one who my eyes are open to seeing these things, right? I, I've talked about these trees in my neighborhood that have changed from, from a white tree, and there's four of them all lined in a row, the two houses, so one house has two trees, the next house right next to it has the same exact two trees. Boom, 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 boom. And they all were white. They're, these are grown adult trees, not like little ones that are growing up. They're, they've always they've been adult trees. And I would walk around my neighborhood every day. And the highlight of my walk, we're seeing these four beautiful trees that were white. And all of a sudden, one day, I walk, they're not white anymore. They're green. Like the white just went away. Wow. A... I, could be, I could be wrong. Maybe it's a seasonal thing of the tree, you know, uh, and maybe next year the white will appear again. But it was very drastic. It was like, like the whole four trees were completely white all over, like completely. And then, I don't know, a week later, it's not like, oh, half of them were white and half of them were green, you know what I'm saying? It was like all green. <laughs> and, I'm, yeah, and, I'm, weird, yeah. and then I look at, at the, on the ground, right? And I'm like, okay, maybe they all fell on the ground and it's all white on the ground. No white on the ground whatsoever. <laughs> no trace of white, no trace of white. So I don't know, I don't know, I can't explain it. But uh, that just tells me that, hey, there, there's more to uncover. Don't just be satisfied with what you already know. Try to be open-minded. Try to open your eyes more to different things. Take a different route. Um, you know what I'm saying? Like, instead of uh, going this way, go that way. Um, be more observant. I, and I think that will really, uh, I don't know, maybe open up your eyes to different things. What, what do you think? Yeah, no, that's interesting with the uh, with the trees changing color. Um, I mean, it's almost like you went to bed and then you woke up the next day, and it's like so. It's almost like you know, is is it like did you wake up, you know, in a different reality? Did you wake up in a different dimension, a different universe, like a different timeline? It's it, you know, uh, Lost Geographic uh, Enrique. He talks about how. Uh, we shift into like different realities that are unseen that are hidden within. Um, and he, he thinks that maybe sometimes when we go to bed and we dream, 
you know, we wake up, we're actually like waking up in a different, uh, like a different reality, a different dimension where those trees are not a different color or they're, are they're missing? You know, there's to be a certain amount of palm trees here. And then next morning there's a little bit less and then a little bit less and less. Um, or maybe there's a drastic change where a huge chunk of palm trees is missing. So there could be like a, like a change where you go and jump to a different dimension where it's like a completely different, but you know, the, that's an interesting theory though you know with the whole multiple dimension theory it's like you know like how do you explain the residue being in this same dimension that you shifted to but it not being back in the previous dimension where you just shifted from so it's like if the residue is there how did it get here from where you shifted it's you know that's what i've been trying to like you know figure out like how is that possible you know the residue how it exists if we're shifting well maybe maybe it's a vibrational thing where we're in we we get into different vibrations um throughout life and uh we don't we don't really jump into different dimensions uh when we change our vibration uh because we're maybe we're in the same soup However, our vibration is different. Therefore, our this place that we live will be different. And part of how the Mandela effect works is that it will cover up or add new, you know, um, things into this reality to adjust maybe to this new frequency that you're on. Um, based on your insights um, and just how you admit, what you admit um, onto this place. Um, maybe that's it. Um, I, I thought about different dimensions too. And that, that's a possibility. But at the same time, it's like, if we're on different dimensions, if we go to different dimensions, then like, do, do we do it with, with people? Like, like, are we, like moving towards different dimensions together you know what i'm saying because we're talking about this yeah or, or is it only an individual based thing and everybody else is just supporting cast um yeah like the truman show kind of right yeah, it's like a like an inception reality like a russian doll reality so imagine kind of like a russian doll you know where you have like little tiny russian dolls within right but it's still one, it's still one Russian doll. You could pick it up, you know, whatever. It's still one, but there's many within, many dimensions within, and we could be shifting through the Russian doll, like different dimensions, you know, and, um, and maybe the residue is bleeding through kind of like if the, so imagine like a Russian doll, right? Again, imagine a Russian doll and imagine all the Russian dolls within are made of this fabric, right? And then, Imagine you were to pour like a Kool-Aid stain on that fabric. The Kool-Aid stain is going to be the most concentrated on the first layer. And then the second layer of the Russian doll, it's going to be a little bit, you know, you're still going to see a little bit, uh, quite a bit. And then further down the Russian doll, it's less and less and less. So you might see less residue when you, I don't know. That's one of the theories that uh, I came up with a couple of days ago. I was just like, well, Cause I was thinking about lost geographics theory, you know, and how, how residue could like still work, you know, within that model of a multiverse or like a multiple dimensions. But yeah, it's just, you know, it's, it's very um, finicky, the model, but, you know, I kind of thought of it like that, like a Russian doll where it's like multiple, re in multiple realities within, you know, but it's still one reality. Um, so I, I don't know if, if that if you ever thought about that before like a like a russian doll type of thing but yeah, it's pretty interesting though that one yeah Man. Or, or what if it's not okay so like what if it's like you know flat earth right like take a flat earth map and put that flat earth map in the russian doll theory right so you have you have like these different layers within like these different uh so it'd be like different geographies, right? But very subtly, but very different. And you have basically, you know, flat earth here and you have another flat earth, but they're all, they're all one, like a Russian doll is. And 
um, there's these little spots, these little vortexes or, or nodal points within the, within the earth, kind of like, you know, like the Bermuda Triangle or the Devil's Triangle. There's these spots, these vortexes within the, within the flat earth that connect you to maybe another time, another place. Cause you know, like when people pass through these things, these Bermuda triangles or devil's triangle, whatever, they experience missing time or like a whole, like a whole hour go by or a whole four hours would go by missing, but really they spent like a week in some other place. So like, what if these little vortex points are actually like, the, the shift in which we are shifting to a different flat earth model within the Russian doll over arc of it all. I mean, that's, that's the theory that I came up with like yesterday with trying to figure out, like trying to like piece it together. But uh, that's just like the theory that I came up with the vortex nodal point model type of, uh, so it's kind of, I don't know. It kind of looks like this kind of, I don't know if you can see it, but it's kind of, like a sketch of that I did kind of where it's like you got the flat earth and then you have all these little points, which are the vortex points. And, you know, that's where like the mystery spots are. That's where like the Bermuda triangle spots are. And then you have um, them connecting to other points in other Bermuda triangles and other double triangles, you know, like other spots, other mystery spots throughout the flat earth. Uh, like a Russian doll type of reality. So, I mean, that that's one of the one of the sketches that I just made up recently. Um, I'm not sure, like exactly, you know, if any of it's correct or whatever. But I'm just trying to like open my mind and start sketching this stuff out. You know, trying to get it on paper. Yeah, that looks like shoots and ladders. You remember that game? Oh yeah, yeah, shoots and ladders. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you get to a ladder that you slide down. Like, yeah, you just like. Yep. Same with yeah. those those nodal points. But that that Russian doll theory is pretty interesting, and it, it kind of gave me an idea that maybe the Russian doll thing is kind of like similar to people's consciousness on truth, like uh, to explain the say flat Earth versus globe Earth. Um, like let's say you're totally a globy, and that's all you see, even with all the evidence provided. That's all you see is, and, and you know those people, right? Uh, you try to explain, to, and they have questions. What about this? What about that? And then you explain to them, right? And legitly, right? And then, but then they're like, nah, right? And then, and then they make excuses uh, why it's a global earth. So maybe they're in a, the part of the onion or the Russian doll that caters to only what they see of global yeah. earth. The shallow portion, the, fir the first shallow portions of it, yeah. Yeah, but then, yeah. well, and let's say um, your consciousness changes, uh, whether it elevates or you're vibing at a different frequency. Uh, you you get you you get you you go into that nota point, and then you you go on that shoot and ladder, the and then you you yeah. you, you you find yourself out, you know, in a bigger part of the the onion or the uh, Russian doll. And that caters to the truth that you're at, which is flat Earth, and everything makes sense to you with flat Earth. But when you're communicating with that person, still in that other dimension, or not dimension, but um, Russian doll um, or onion layer, mm -hmm. yeah. they're still stuck on that layer of globe Earth, and, and that's all that makes sense to them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. No matter what you throw at them, you know, you can't crack. They're that layer. They well, they don't. Well, maybe they don't want to crack that layer. Exactly. Well, maybe they want to stay in that layer. Yeah, yeah. and they that's their consent. that's their consent. That is their reason on on living, and they don't want to consent to cracking open another layer. Yeah. Uh, and and I think that's that's where we come in is we can share with them, tell them, oh, you know. The, the new layer that I'm in looks like this. And I have everything to back it up with, you know. However, we cannot force them. We cannot carry them. We cannot pull them to that new layer. They, they have to want to seek that truth so that it may set them free. They have to seek that truth, you know. 
seek the truth and it shall set you free. You know, that's what I remember. Yeah. Not not make you free, but set you free. <laughs> that's another uh, change. But yeah, definitely. Yeah. They, they got to they, they, they got to want that. They got to want that. They they want to they, they have to have that that seeking that desired to break through. So um, yeah, it definitely goes back to the whole consent factor. Yeah. yeah and they got to put on new wineskins. How about that? Oh, yeah. There you go. New truths require new wineskins. Because yeah, if you leave, if if you're learning these new truths with the same old paradigm thoughts and beliefs of the old wineskin, you know, the old uh, uh, onion layer, then eventually that will burst and uh, maybe you'll go crazy. So, yeah. you know, eventually I think we ought to, yeah, have that, I don't know, new way of thought, new way of thinking. We're definitely not in Kansas anymore. No, we're not. <laughs> definitely not. So uh, we met at um, Brian Stavely's uh, meetup uh, in Huntington Beach. I see you have a hat there. Yeah, um, that, was, that was cool. Why don't, you, why don't you tell the viewers what your thoughts were with uh, going to that meetup, um, trying something new? Different. You drove right from from the Bay Area. Is, yeah, uh, yep. I drove all the way from the Bay Area. It was about like a six to seven hour drive. On uh, you know, I you know, I picked out my hotel at nine and then uh, stayed there a while. Kind of checked out the area, you know, the vibe and whatnot. It was really laid back, and and then I met everybody, you know, at Longboards. I met Hugh. I met. Brian, I met I met everyone. I met Jacobian. It was really cool to meet everybody and to actually, you know, meet people in person, you know, because you know, a lot of the times we meet people, we meet them on the screen, you know, on the internet. We don't really talk much. So it's really cool to get out there, you know, and just like feel the actual vibe and energy coming off of everybody, bouncing off everybody. It's really it's really good, you know. It's good for the it's good for the soul, you know, to get out there. Yeah, definitely. It was definitely good to meet you. Um, and uh, yeah, just share a beer together and just, just kind of like talk and chill. I remember you you bringing that C-3PO. Oh, um, yeah. yeah. You still have it? Yeah, it's tucked away over here. Uh, I have it tucked away. But yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's one of those ones from like 1978. Uh, and it's like a, it's kind of like yours in a way, but it's a little bit different with the shoulders and whatnot. But it's still like 12 inch figure, you know. It's all gold, uh, two gold legs, you know. It's completely, um, you know, like detailed, you know, exactly the way you know yours is as well. So it's they took the time to actually, you know, paint all the little little uh, cords on the stomach and all that. They they actually took the time to actually get all the details and crevices and all that. Yet they didn't have what like they didn't have silver paint they didn't have chrome paint back then like you know that doesn't make any sense how they didn't see that detail you know it's yeah they had, they had to be looking at the original in order to like see it you know it's wild it's, it is you said what year, what year was that made uh that one's from 1978 and i believe yours is 1997 right 1997. So you have a well, you have one that's like 20 years older than the one yeah. i have yeah it's weird so it's it's like uh it, the dates don't matter what people are like perceiving it it's like it's showing you like even like very close to when the movie came out it's showing you that people are literally experiencing reality like with two gold legs you know so it's it's not like a like it's like oh it happened later you know it's like it's happened right right at the point when the movie came out so you can't really say it's you know oh he's just misremembering or whatever you know you can't you can't use that oh man that's that's an amazing artifact <laughs> I, I would call it an artifact that was 1978 oh wow that's like a year after the first one came out so yeah, that's a that's a big one for you right c3po that's a pretty big one yeah sure not just for me but my 11 year old son because he loves Star Wars. He got hooked on the first three movies. And uh, 
you know, one day I asked him, hey, Brian, what, what is uh, C-3PO's color? And he said, all gold. And then when I, bro when I broke it down to him and I told him no, and then I showed him the footage, his mind is blown. Still is today. Wow. And, um, and that's why it hits home not only for me, but my son. Like, that's how he got in into the Mandela. He would always tell me, Dad, are there other Mandela effects now? Like, what are, what are the new ones that, that have come out? He's, he's, his mind is blown too, you know? And then whenever I ask anybody, anybody else what color C-3PO is, they would say all gold. No one says silver. Nobody. I mean, I haven't met anybody that I have not met anybody that remembers it all all silver. No way. No. I've not met one. It's just like mirror mirror on the wall. You know, I haven't met anybody that remembers it as magic mirror on the wall. And, you know, same with a scary movie. You know, I see white people. I have not met anybody that says that they remember I see dead people as it as it always was. It's always been I see white people, but the, the line I see white people is completely gone from the movie. And yeah. you know, I, you I know, and he's do you remember I wonder if it, it's the same scene that he said it now and before. Like do you remember where he he was and and um like tell tell me where was he when he said that? Well you know you watch the movie now it's, he's pretty much in the same spot. It's just that the the words have changed from I see white people to I see dead people. So it's it's changed from something that was really funny to now something that's just a copy of the of the sixth sense. So it's not as funny as it once was. It didn't have that same. It doesn't have that same energy. It doesn't have the same energy as it once was. So not only do we notice the change, but we notice the energy as well has changed. Uh, that's an, I think that's another important aspect because you know I, sh I shared a picture of you with uh, with McDonald's. You know how it looked like back in the day and how McDonald's looks like now, like McDonald's now, it, <laughs> McDonald's now looks like a laboratory or a, or a penitentiary. You know, you walk in there and everything's all sterile and everything's all bland, colorless. But back in the day when we were kids, McDonald's was like the place to go. You know, like we would see kids there, uh, families would get together, kids would play together, you know, on the playground. But now they, they took all the playgrounds out. So it's like that whole energy that was once there, they, they took that out. And so it's like, we didn't, we didn't want that. We didn't consent to that reality. We didn't want that reality, but that reality happened to us. And it's like, I want that other reality back. You know, I want that. You know what? Uh, <laughs> wine skins, wine skins. We got to We got to adjust. We, we can't be like, Oh, I want the old wine skin. We're in a new place. Yeah. We're definitely in a new place. And that's the hard part, right? It's switching the wine skins to new. Like, like we don't have to like it, but we have to accept it. And um, like, it's not like we can go back and be like, "Hey, you know, I want the old McDonald's back." No, we yeah. we got like, "Hey, this is this is how it is now," and let's accept it and move on. Like, but it's it is it is kind of sad, right? When things right. Are changing, or the worst. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but uh. <laughs> But with the icy white people, so I was in uh, Florida on a trip to go, you know, see my sister and whatnot. And you know, her uh, her husband's kind of like kind of really hard set. You know, the Mandela effects. You know, it's not real. You know, it's he's very skeptical of the Mandela effect. Let's just say that. So I was throwing a lot of stuff at him. I was throwing mirror mirror on the wall at him. You know, I was throwing uh, the Monopoly guy in the monocle. You know, I throw that at him. And, you know, he kind of remembers some stuff, but he would always just kind of be like, well, it's a different version of the movie. Oh, well, you know, people just mix it up with the Mr. You know, Phoenix guy or whatever. But I kind of like sensed his energy. I'm like, well, what should I get him with? And then I thought of I see white people. So, uh, you know, I asked him, I, ha I had him fill in the blank. Like, what do you remember Marlon Wayne saying in the movie Scary Movie? Um, I see blank people. And then he filled it in as white. You know, he remembers I see white people. So he's really like skeptical, very, very, very skeptical of the Mandela effect. But I got him with that, with that particular one. Uh, <laughs> and then he started like, well, he started, uh, he didn't, from then on, he, he couldn't really figure it out. Because I told him that, you know, if you check the deleted scenes, if you check 
all of the cameos, if you check all of the commercials that came out, all of the teaser trailers, none of them have Marlon Wayne saying, I see white people. It's completely gone from this reality, this existence, whatever you want to call it. It's completely gone. But he has a dead set memory that it was I see white people. Um, he couldn't explain that one away um, <laughs> that night. <laughs> so so now he's probably, you know, it might have planted a little seed, you know, you, you never know. It's it's so easy to get people, right? It's so easy to find one Mandela effect. All it takes is one. Yep. You know, and whether they become a believer or not, all it takes is one to like throw that seed into their mind. Yeah. I mean, if it's something they're the, that... ones, they're the ones who give you the answer. You, you don't you don't give them a multiple choice. No, no. Just fill it in. Yeah, cuz cuz that reality that they experienced, we also experienced. So it's a shared it's like a shared reality that we're experiencing together and we know it was that way. We can't say that, "Oh, well you're just making it up. You're one person. You're just hallucinating your own reality or whatever." Like a you know, like solipsism where you know, reality exists in the mind only and there's nothing external. All of reality is in the mind. Like, no, no, we experienced, I see white people. Another person across the world probably experienced it as well, uh, you know, from a different region on the earth. And they all remember it being, I see white people. So you can't say that it's like a solipsis reality where it only exists in our mind. So that's that theory kind of goes out the window. And I'm living more about the onion theory, the onion layer theory, um, how people have to break through. And it's, they can only break through based on their own consent. They want to have to break through yep. to break through, no matter how much evidence, no matter how much slam dunk of a Mandela effect, you convince them. If they yep. still don't want to break through, whether they believe it or not, they're gonna stay where they're at. They're gonna be in. They're gonna be stuck in that old wine skin. And they, they I don't know. It's, yeah. whew, it's, it's, it's really deep. Um, we are past the one hour mark. Thank you, everybody, for joining on this episode of Hugh TV's. We're not in Kansas anymore. Um, let's take a break. Um, during the break, Blue Pac Man, can you uh, maybe get ready to show some uh, stuff about The Lion King, uh, about that movie? Maybe you can present some info. So um, if you can prepare that on our break, that'd be great. Thank you, everybody, for joining. We'll be back. Hey, idiots, the bone stays in the treehouse. Hey, boy. <laughs> Are you crazy? What if the cops come? <laughs> You're here too? Yeah, must be weird for you. <laughs> and think about this, man. The whole world is happening right now. I mean, India, China, it's crazy. Can you just leave me here with my dad? All right, sure. I can fly! No, no, I can't! We are concerned about trouble and trying to be responsible one-sided news stories plaguing our country. Plaguing our country. The sharing of biased and false news has become all too common on social media. More alarming, some media outlets publish these same fake stories without checking facts first. The sharing of biased and false, false news, news has, has become, become all too common, common on, on social, social media. media. More alarming, some media outlets publish these same stories without checking facts first. Unfortunately, some members of the media use their platforms to push their own personal bias and agenda to control Exactly what people think. And this, this is, is extremely, extremely dangerous, dangerous to our, our democracy. democracy. This is extremely dangerous to our democracy. This is extremely dangerous to our democracy. This is extremely dangerous to our democracy.
Thank you for joining guys it's been a great live stream with jonathan now jonathan um are you planning on going to las vegas for the next flat earth conference 
Yeah, I'm, I'm really, uh, I'm thinking about going out there to meet everybody. Um, I got to see how some things go first, but I'm really, I'm my, my whole plan is that, yeah, I'm, as of now, I'm, I'm definitely going to go check it out for sure. Yeah. Now, what would you say to someone who's maybe on the fence like me? Uh, uh, like, why should they go? Well, I mean, well, it says they got to drive or fly. They got to get the hotel. It's not cheap. So yeah. uh, there's definitely a cost to it. Um, why, 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 why do it? I mean, what, what are they going to get out of it? I think, you know, you know, it's, it's really good that we, that we, you know, come out and meet each other and share our ideas and our viewpoints and just kind of like feed off our, feed off our own energies and just like, I don't know, it's more of a place to go where everybody's positive and everybody's sharing that same frequency and that same vibration. And when you, and, and when your vibrations like coalesce with one another, it, um, it does something to the soul. It's almost like, you know, when you go on a nature walk or a hike and you get to the top of the mountain and you just like breathe the fresh air and it's like you're, you're connecting with like the source, you know, it's the same type of connection, you know, that you get when you're at these places, you know, it's the same type of vibe and vibration. You get a, like a high almost, you know, you're not getting high, high, but you're getting like a, a very healthy, natural high, a very positive high. It's definitely a high. Yeah. Um, because you're around the people, you know, around the people that are vibing at a certain frequency. And, you know, yeah. And you might, you might know something that you didn't know. Um, like for, you know, like you might come across people who have different theories about what this reality could be, whether it's Mandela effect or whether it's flat earth. Uh, whatever you know you might meet somebody that you never you never knew this particular subject matter before you know it it might help you get one step closer to figuring out like what this place is or it might it just might help to heal your soul like you might not be trying to like figure out what this place is but you just want to be there with people and you just want to connect with people and feel like you're in a family you know like like you feel like you belong you know like there's people that think like you and there's people that are vibing on the same frequency as you. And if it's a family frequency, you know, you could say. Yeah. yeah the big part of meeting in person is not feeling alone. Uh, we all have been there, right. Feeling like, you know, I know all of this. I want to share it to everybody, but no one's listening and I feel alone. And like, <laughs> So oh, alone, so alone, and uh, I get it. Uh, the people, I mean, even our family members, a lot of them won't even listen to us. But we still have to maintain that relationship. Um, but at the same time, it makes us feel alone. It makes us feel isolated. And that's yeah. not what we want to be. We want to feel like we are part of a community, part of something, um, and. Uh, I recommend, <laughs> it's funny. I recommend people going to meetups. Uh, not every meetup is going to be good for you, right? Uh, so you have to determine what's going to be good for you and what's not. Uh, but if you've never been, just try. Just try to go to one at least so you kind of know what it's like and, and know what it feels like to be around certain people. And of course, you're not gonna vibe with everybody there. That's impossible. But uh, you'll you'll eventually make your own clique, your own uh, you know circle of friends. Uh, you know, if I go, I'm not gonna be like all over the place talking to everybody. There's certain people I don't I don't I don't I don't connect with, and that's okay. But uh, you know, I'll, I'll stick in my corner. Of uh, the of the of the place, and uh, we'll have fun doing that. So I'm still debating. I'm still battling whether I'm going to go or not. It is uh, on the West Coast this year, so that's kind of special, right? First time the Flat Earth event is on the West Coast. Um, now, Jonathan, uh, when when uh, 
did you first find out about Flat Earth? Uh, when did you first become a believer? And was that, uh, did that uh, you along to Mandela Effect or was Mandela Effect first? Or what, did it all happen at the same time? Um, yeah, so, um, you know, like when I was six years old, that's when I first had my first encounter with the Mandela Effect. So I guess you could kind of technically say the Mandela Effect, but um when I first came to Flat Earth and I was become aware of, you know, of the seeking the truth and whatnot, I uh, it was 2013 when I started getting into Flat Earth. But what got me to seeking Flat Earth, uh, I used to play a video game called Minecraft. I'm not sure if you heard about it, Minecraft. Uh, I'm not sure. I think Brian might know. Uh, your son might know about it. But uh, I used to play that a lot. And in Minecraft... Uh, you build stuff out of blocks and you could fight monsters, you know, you could go on quests, you can uh, build a house out in the woods in the game, you know, and all that. And uh, I used to create like, uh, like mega build creations and whatnot. And uh, I, I used to use the game more of like an artistic uh, expression uh, that I used to make videos on my channel a long time ago. But how I got to the whole like idea, like questioning what this reality is, is while I was playing the game, you know, I was looking around and seeing that everything's like flat level. And when I was a kid, you know, I always looked around and thought, well, you know, the sun's moving, you know, above me. And in the game, in the Minecraft game, the sun's also moving above me. Oh, wow. Isn't that that's pretty interesting how there's two little patterns I'm noticing here and there, you know, and the, and the level plane and the level eyesight and the whole, uh, the vanishing point within the game is the same, you know, with the vanishing point. If you look at a railroad track, you know how it goes. And then, you know, you can't see any more railroad track cause that's, that's the vanishing point where the horizon line is. Um, we learned that also, um, in art class about the, the vanishing point and two point perspective and all that. So, um, in the game it's two point perspective. So, I started connecting these points to my experience of reality and me playing the game. And that eventually led me down researching and looking on YouTube about, you know, what this place is. And, you know, I went down all the, uh, you know, rabbit holes that people go down to and they, you know, look through flat earth on YouTube. And, um, but it was the, the video game Minecraft that kind of opened the door to me, like questioning, like, you know, like this place is pretty level and, it, it doesn't seem round and spinny, you know? So I started going down that route in 2013, 2014. Um, and then from 2014 to 2015, that's when it kind of slowly switched over to Mandela effect, you know, blowing up on the internet, uh, which is kind of weird because people were using the word Mandela effect in like 2012. Like I had a student, uh, like one of my classmates from high school came in the store that I work at and he's like, I asked him like, when did you first hear about the word Mandela effect? And he said, Oh, it was uh, the teacher in my economics class was talking about it in 2012. I'm like, wait a minute, what in 2012. So like, I guess the term blew up in like 2010, 2009 or whatever, but I never really heard of the term at all until 2016, which I found kind of weird. Um, but yeah, with Flat Earth, um, I definitely went down all, all the you know routes with the uh, laser experiment over over the lake, and how the laser was basically showing that the whole level surface of the lake remained parallel with the laser beam, and you know that really helped me to you know uh, really understand that the mathematics that they show us about a round curve doesn't add up at all. And of course, you know, we can see too far with the, uh, the, you know, the telescope and whatnot, we could bring back the boat, you know, it's not that we have, you know, magical binoculars, but we could actually use these tools, these cameras and actually prove that this earth isn't curved, like they're telling us that it is. And so, you know, I was, I was going down all those routes and, uh, um, that's how flat earth, you know, kind of came to me. And then of course, you know, I, I was 
looking at a lot of people at the time. It's it's been so long, you know, but I'm I'm pretty sure you know I came up a lot of globe. Uh, I checked out a lot of Globebuster videos and Bob Modell. They were doing a lot of good work back then, and uh, of course, I went down some bad routes as well. You know, um, just because I was open minded, you know, I went down the whole you know Stephen Christ or whatever his name is, you know, and all that the whole convex earth theory, you know? So, I mean, I, I was open-minded, but I, I, I uh, quickly went the other direction in some cases, because you could easily spot when uh, there's like you know, some false information going about. So you, you could sense that energy. So, you know, I, I went back and forth uh, with other creators and uh, you know, it's very important, you know, knowing that this place, you know, what they, what they tell us doesn't add up with what we experience um, in reality. So if that's a very key factor, you know, if it doesn't line up with what you're experiencing, you know, like you can see the sky and the sun and the moon move over, but they're telling you, you know, that this, the moon's moving and all, you know, and, and the, uh, the earth is spinning in all these directions, which doesn't make sense, you know, with the flight routes and all that, the, the spin of the earth, if it's going one direction and, let's say you're going to fly from Florida all the way to LA. Well, if the earth is spinning this way and my plane's going that way, I should be there in no time. But when you look at it, the time zone, the time from here to there, from here to there is exactly the same. So why is that? It shouldn't be the same, but it is the same. The time flights are the same to and fro from LA to Florida, from Florida to LA, they're exactly the same time flights. So that doesn't work if it's a globe and you're spinning and you're cutting through that spin. So that was a huge one that I learned from uh, Brian Stavely. So shout out to Brian Stavely for that. That's, a, you know, I learned that from him, but he probably learned it from somebody else, you know, and so shout out to whoever that was, you know, uh, it's really, really the good. Responses, they always say, well, it, it's all contained in the same atmosphere. So every everything's spinning together. No, yeah, no, yeah. Because then how 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 is how is the plane gonna like glitch out? It, it, it just doesn't work. If 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 you were to say that, it just how is the plane gonna like do this motion? Like it's it's gonna like what spaz out? Like that doesn't make any sense, you know. Or is the plane just gonna you know like just hover and wait for the destination? Like no, the plane flies, you know, it moves. So. It's it's very interesting. Yeah, the biggest uh, slam dunk for me in terms of flat Earth is uh, just us being to be able to see way too far. Um, the binocular thing, you know, pulling things up and then with the binocular. I mean, if it was if it went under the edge, it, no matter how great a binocular you have, you're not going to be able to pull it up above the edge. You know what I'm saying? It's good. The, the edge is going to always block what you're wanting to see, right? If it goes yeah. underneath, underneath it, right? Yeah. Um, but because you can pull it in with a binocular, it just tells me, like, hey, it's, there's nothing that's going underneath the curve. Exactly, yeah. Oh man. So how, how do you uh, how do you explain truthers? who believe in flat earth, but can't see the Mandela effect. Like that just blows my mind. Yeah, it blows my mind too, you know? I mean, like for me, you know, um, like I, you know, I, I, I came to, you know, I was very, very heavily researched 9-11, you know, uh, I did a lot of 9-11 um, digging around when I was young in 2005. And so I was, you know, I was in that mindset of like looking, you know, at deceptions and fakery and whatnot so you know when it came to you know like flat earth it wasn't as big of a, a jump you know it was more of a it, you know it wasn't that big you know but it still was you know because you know as a kid you know you taught the globe and whatnot but 9 11 helped to kind of peel back that onion for me to um accept more of you know like to get to that point where flat earth is more you know is the possibility is the reality so you know, it's hard how some people who are flat earthers, they just can't see 
the Mandela effect, you know, it's, it's very mind boggling how you can be open minded to this theory, you could be open minded to that theory, um, you could be open minded to the, these facts or those facts, but you can't be open minded and, and actually take a look at what could be causing, you know, the Mandela effect or what is the Mandela effect or why do you remember it the way we do? You know, they, they don't want to question that. They don't want to question that they remember it the way we do. Why, why don't they want to do that? Why don't they, it's just really very mind boggling how they can be open-minded to a, to a degree, but they, they can't take that extra step, that extra step, that extra leap, you know, it's like, it's that, you, yeah. extra layer that they got to break through that and extra that outside Russian doll. You know what I'm saying? Like they got to yeah. get through, but they, they won't, they can't. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. Cause we, you know, we were kind of going along the same journeys. They were, you know, going under and uncovering this place, you know, with all the fakery and all the, you know, stuff going on with Connecticut and all that. And, and then we get to flat earth 2013, 2014. And then after that, all of a sudden, you know, Medelpha blows up, but then they just, they can't cross that line. You know, it's, uh, it's almost like something's blocking them from seeing it, or there's an ego involved. Um, they don't want to be seen. Maybe, maybe they do believe it, but they don't want to be seen as crazy because the masses, you know, cause what the media, see what the media does is the media. Look, you're, look. The media makes it as a meme. The media makes the Mandela effect as a meme so you can laugh at it and joke about it or whatever. The media does that for a reason. It, it, see, it does that for a reason so that anybody who talks about the Mandela effect is just a Look, jokester. You're already a flat earther. earther. You're yeah. already a flat earther. So come on. Like, exactly, yeah. How much more embarrassed do you uh, – are, are you so sensitive? I mean – being a flat earther, first of all, I mean, it's not, uh, you're not going to be uh, lauded as someone uh, intellectual or, or smart. So you're already in that camp. So yeah. it's not that hard to just step into the Mandela effect pool. Understand that this reality is fluid. It's okay. You don't have to be afraid. Yeah. So, like, you know, a lot of the flat earthers will look you know, what the media is doing, whatever, and they, they might not know it, but they're actually being programmed to think that the Mandela effect is just some funny little gag, some funny little meme on the internet. And then they don't really look into it at all. After that, they just shut down and be like, oh, it's just some meme, some little memory game. Because that's, that's what the media does. It minimalizes the supernatural. It minimalizes it so that it can hide it. And if it can hide it, it can get people to not even look at it and go down that rabbit hole. The, you know, actually open their mind to that possibility. So uh, that's a that's a tactic. It's a warfare, psychological warfare tactic on not just the normies, but also the people who are in the truth movement looking at flat earth and other truths. Look, it's, uh, it's say, pretty deep. If you're on the border of Mandela effect or not, my suggestion is be open-minded. If one gets you, then you're Mandela affected. It's not a big deal. And it's freeing. It's freeing to know that we're not stuck in this physical world, that we are spiritual beings. We go beyond the physical. And that should give you hope. That should give you, uh, it should give you a lot of hope that just because things are the way they are now, doesn't mean that they're gonna be like this tomorrow or next month or next year. Things can always improve. Things can always get better, no matter how shitty this reality spits itself out there with the shitty versions of the Mandela effects. It can always, it can always be good as well. You know, your relationships can miraculously improve for the better. A person that maybe you had a hard time with in your past 
with the Mandela effect, it shows me that these people can change overnight. It also tells me that even you, maybe you have a hard heart. Maybe you can change overnight. That gives me hope. And yes, Julio and Sue, we are live. <laughs> Sorry, uh, we, well, we've been uh, ignoring the comment section. We do see you, but uh, it's just hard to read both the comment section and be involved and engaging <clears throat> with the topic involved. But we do uh, are appreciative of everyone who's here. Um, shout out to everybody in the chat. Yeah, can you do a shout out um, real quick? Yeah, I'll do a shout out. So, so here in the chat, we have uh, Mr. Super Sidewinder, and we have Sue Finelli. Shout out to Sue Finelli. We have Three Fingers. And we have Carrie Skates. What's up, Carrie Skates? Uh, let's see, we have uh, Call for Zero. Call for Zero is in the chat. What's up, Call? And we have Boston Ray Mud Flood. So up, Ray? Yeah, Ray, Ray's been doing a lot of live streams lately. Uh, a lot of late night live streams on Ray's channel. Uh, go check it out, guys, on Ray's channel. He's got a lot of good stuff. Uh, we got S. Lee in the house. We got Julio Lua. I'm not sure. I, Julie, Julio Lua. Yeah. And see, we have commercial sound and video. Shout out to commercial sound. And we have Brian S. Stavely in the chat. So, Brian, putting on some good live streams lately. Uh, we have Overprotected 1111. Shout out to Overprotected. Uh, she, she watches some of my videos. Uh, one of the big ones for her is the uh, Lizzie McGuire and the uh, Britney Spears Missing Mike. That's one of her uh, big ones. Uh, let's see. We have a uh, random fan. And let's see. Yep. Yeah, that's pretty much everyone here. So with the Britney Spears one? Yeah, that, that one uh, for overprotected. That's a big one for her. Uh, that one, that one's a big one for me too. You know, I remember her wearing that black mic in the, in the music video so crazy because now when you watch it it's completely gone doesn't exist yet we have some like yeah some pretty interesting residue that shows that she did wear that uh mic in that video uh there's one like lizzie mcguire episode where um there's like this little cut scene in the show and she has the head mic on it's like how can that possibly be you know it's never been in the music video so uh, it's like, it's really crazy just to see no mic, you know, it's just like, wow, it's gone. It's like, like even look at the, you, know, you can see like the empty space over, you know, to her face where there's an empty space. It's like, why would they shoot that big picture with empty space if there wasn't no like mic, you know, it's like it's missing. What's it's crazy missing. about the video, sometimes she'll, she'll t try to touch it, right? Yeah, yeah, she would kind of like touch it to try to adjust it and then she'll kind of shy away because she's trying to adjust the mic to fit right you know it's it's so weird why she got a mic exactly right why she got a mic exactly dude that's crazy that's oops i did it again i played with your heart i'm not gonna anyway. say <laughs> yep. It's ridiculous. It, it, she does look better with a mic. You know, it's kind of like the whole Bobby Brown, my prerogative thing, right? That's what she was trying to do. Yeah. You know yeah, how I mean, Brown had the mic in his music video? Yep. Other other Halloween costumes for like the Hit Me Baby One More Time, you know, all those uh, Halloween uh, outfits don't have a mic. But specifically, <laughs> this one does because it had the video. It, in the video, it had it. So it's like very specific. That That's video. so funny. The Mandela effect will like just like erase it from a video that yeah, have so that has been seen millions and millions of times. Yeah. That's nuts. Now um 
can you share a little bit about your Lion King experience? Yeah, so I mean, that's so you know how people have personal Mandela effects, um, like with Brian, with Brian Stavely, his personal Mandela effect is you know the neighborhood changing from Centerville to Centralville. I mean, when you have a personal change, it's uh, it's like a whole nother level, you know, with the Mandela effect. It's very personal. So with the Lion King, um, this we're talking about is the Lion King live action movie. And this movie for me, and there's some other people out there as well, but this movie for me, this movie came out in 2014 and it was the live action movie, CGI live action. Uh, it wasn't the cartoon version at all. Um, so this movie for me came out in 2014. And then I believe around late 2019 or early 2020 is when I heard that this movie, the live action movie came out in 2019. And I was just absolutely blown away because like I have a very, very concrete memory of going to see this movie in 2014, not just by myself, but with my family, with my mom, my dad, my sister, and her husband. And we went to go see this movie in 2014. Now, in this reality, whatever you want to call it, it's always came out in 2019. But for me, that is just impossible. And in fact, I haven't even seen the 2019 version. I haven't seen the 2019 version yet. So I have no idea how it's going to compare to my memory, but I haven't even seen it yet. So this movie, the live action CGI, is um, realistic CGI based off of realistic um, lion behavior and movement. And this is completely different than a cartoon. With a cartoon, it's not realistic. A cartoon is just, you know, a drawing with color added to it, you know, and very simplified. Like, this is completely different. So I, I, I'm not mixing up any of the memories between the two. And in fact, many people like to say, well, in 2014, you know, it's the 20th anniversary of The Lion King. You're just mixing it up with them re-releasing the movie in theaters. But the problem with that theory is that if you look into it and you research it and you dig into it, there was no re-release for the 20th anniversary of The Lion King 1994 in the movie theaters in 2014, which by itself is pretty crazy because why not? It's the 20th anniversary. Why wouldn't you have a re-release of the 1994 in theaters? Why not? But no, in this reality, guys, there was no re-release for the 20th anniversary in any 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 theater. I looked it up. There was no all the only thing that came out in 2014 for The Lion King was the soundtrack for the original movie, which is a soundtrack. It, it wasn't the actual film or visual. It was just a soundtrack that came out in 2014 for The Lion King. And that was like on VH. It was uh it was not VHS, but it was um for DVD and Blu-ray. So it was a soundtrack that was released for the original movie. The complete soundtrack and you can look this up it's completely crazy so um this for me is pretty big because you know it's not only me but my family that i remember going to go see it with and um i do have some residue to show um for it actually you know there's people that remember it being 2014 and there's like a whole fan page that was created about this movie this film for 2014 and it's even what's weird is there's even like a, a serial number a movie serial number so like you know how at the end of the movie when the credits scroll and you get to the bottom right there's like a serial number and it's got that weird oval shaped globe type of like lines going through it like a grid line um and it's got the serial number on top n o dot and then the number the serial number for the movie so what the serial number for the movie is you can enter that into the serial number movie database and you can figure out what movie that is. So that serial number is like an ID number that will show you what that movie is and when it came out. So what I did was I 
went to the serial database movie number um, website and I typed in different movies like the 1994 so I can see like, okay, it's bringing up the 1994 movie, Lion King. And then I, uh, I brought up another one with like a different movie and it brought up that movie and when it released. So the data, the database was showing me correct, you know, stats. And so what I did was I went to the uh, residual page for that fan casting page. Um, and I put in the serial number for the 2014 film of the Lion King. I put that in the serial database number website to see what would pop up. But what popped up was a little, so it took me down here, down the page where there was like all these blank listings. It was like blank, 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 blank. And it had the serial number right there. And it said like TBA and TBA is an abbreviation for to be announced. So it's like a movie that's going to be announced, yet it never existed. Yet there's a fan page that was created back in the day in 2014 where it's showing that it was a film released in theaters. And what's weird, it's even got like a copyright and all that. It's so weird. Um, what else is, you know, I could show some residue if you want, Hugh, um, yeah, on, my, on the screen share. Let's see. So how do I, uh, I never done this before. It's my first <clears throat> screen share. Um, um, let's see. Can you screen share? Are you allowed to? I'm not sure. I forgot. There's the invite button. No, not the invite. There's the present button. Do you have a present button? Present. Oh, yeah, I do right here. Yeah. Is that the one? Yeah. Okay. Let me bring it up. That's wild that you saw the live version in on 2014, five years before it got released in 2019. I remember it got released in 2019, the live version. But you're yeah. saying you saw it five years prior you yeah. and sister and her husband correct yeah five years yep oh man i wish i could get this let's see oh here it is uh, let's see Upload that's five. wild that mean that that meant that you were in a, a different reality does it does not mean is not true if that if that's true that you you were in a different reality watching a movie that didn't exist for me in 2014 mm -hmm. So how do you explain that? Oh, yeah, it's, it's, I mean, I've been trying to wrap my head around it. You know, it's just like the Mandela effect, you know, like, how do you, how do you explain what's causing the Mandela effect? You know, it, it's like an endless, uh, man, it's like an endless uh, quandary, you know, uh, let's see if I could, I want to pull up something, but it's not letting me let's see, present video file. Share screen. Um, here we go. Okay. All right. Can you see my screen? Yeah. Okay. So we'll start with the first one uh, just to kind of. So right now in this reality, the Lion King live action movie. So the, so here's the weird part, right? So the first time when the plans were made to make this movie now is in September of 2016. Now I, I'd already seen the movie in 2014, all right? This movie, the first plans for it, um, the director, John Favreau came out in September of 2016 that they were gonna make a remake of The Lion King 1994, but it was gonna be a live action CGI movie. But here's the crazy part, there's, there's people on Quora.com that are asking this weird question. Okay, so here's what I found. This question is dated October 13th, 2015, well over a year prior to when the September 2016 announcement was made that they were going to make a remake of the 1994. 
So this question came out 2015. And so the question is this, how did the Lion King animators study lions in order to draw realistic lions for the movie? Like, what? So it's like, this question came out, this question was asked, okay, get this, Hugh. This question was asked in 2015 of October. Plans for the movie to be remade now in this current timeline wasn't until a year after this question was made in September of 2016. How is this person asking this question in 2015 about how they got the lines to be realistic you're saying, for the movie? You're saying, you're saying this is residue proof that it came out in 2014. Yes, this is a very, very, um, this is a very mental piece of residue that somebody asked a question. This is like a, uh, it's like a residue type of question because, because very, maybe they watched it in 2014, similar to you. Yeah, this person. Yeah, they watched it. Maybe, maybe it was a different time. You know how the, the Mandela effect works, but this question doesn't make sense because now in this reality, plans for a movie didn't get to the public knowledge until September of 2016. So how can this person ask this question at all? This doesn't make any sense. And they're using the word, the term realistic. So they're, it's, they're not referring to a cartoon version of the movie. They're referring to the realistic version of the movie, which now has always been 2019. What's up with lions and the Mandela effect? We got yeah, the Lion, Lion King movie. We got Isaiah 11, 6. Yeah, it's uh, the, the lion. I think there's more to it. Kind of like with the whole, you know, color pattern going on. There's a lot of, you know, people out there like C3PO's Golden Calf uh, channel on YouTube. He's putting out good videos. There's a lot of messages, you know, and the lion. I think I think there's something more to this lion. Um, uh, it could refer to the creator, like in the Bible, where it talks about how, you know, Jesus is the lion of the tribe of Judah. And we're getting that as well. And this could be pointing towards the lion, pointing towards the creator. So it's kind of like it's getting us to point towards the creator as opposed to the physical or the adversary, the wolf. So it's it's What's showing the, us a way kind of. What is your, your anchor memory of watching it in 2014? Why, why do you remember 20, it to be 2014? Uh, I, I don't, I don't just, I have like a, I can literally go back in my mind and feel like I could, re I remember walking down the aisle of the movie theater to go get our seats. And we were, and I remember where we were seating in the movie theater, we were sitting towards the front of the movie theater and we had to kind of like cock our heads back up to look at it. You know, my neck kind of hurt from looking at it. So I, I had that anchor memory of me and my pain in my neck looking up, but also my visual anchor memory, me walking down the aisle with my family and going down to sit in the seats in the front row area. And you remember it being it 2014 packed. that you watched it with your family? What was that? You remember it being 2014 that you watched it with your family? Yeah, I went with my family in 2014 to go see the movie. Are you sure it wasn't 2019? No, no. Yeah, it was it was definitely 2014, maybe 20 early 2015, because the movie was still running in theaters in early 2015. So it's gotta be, it could have been be a, that area. It's gotta be a mismemory, Jonathan. <laughs> no, no way, dude. Yeah, no way, bro. This this is absolutely incredible. Well, 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 is. is it a glitch in the matrix? Are we in a matrix or something? I had dude that's uh, it keeps me up at night you know i'm like thinking like what the hell is this you know because with brian's personal change his neighborhood change you know like that's crazy like a place that you see every day you know is a certain way and it's the personal changes are very very um how do i say they're 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 very powerful than a regular mandela effect because this is like it hits home to you you know it's not like something you you know you might have just misforgotten the movie line or whatever. Like this is something you have a visual memory of. You have all these anchor details that don't make sense when, you know, comparing it to the new timeline and what it says. So here, like 
this is weird. So like an AI bot kind of like responds to the question. All of a sudden, this weird little AI bot, it responds to the question and it says, the animators of The Lion King spent several months researching and studying lions in order to create realistic and accurate depictions of the animals in the film. So this is being asked by an AI bot in 2015. But I have suspicions that this AI bot was added in later to kind of almost like it was like inserted later. I don't know how this AI bot got to this question in 2015 because, you know, AI bots back then weren't really a thing. So I think this AI bot might have been in like an insertion uh, pretty like recently. But but oh, it's yeah. weird. It's weird, though. It says it's answering it in almost like the way um, like it's so weird because it's it's responding to it using like realistic and accurate depictions of the animals in the film. They traveled to Africa to observe lion behavior, movements, their natural habitat. It's got all this, this weird details that it's so weird. And then it says they applied all this research to create realistic and accurate lion characters for the film. So like, how is this possible in 2015? This guy asked the question and this answer from the AI bot. It's so weird. I didn't even know there was technology with AI bots to answer questions. Like, yeah, you know, so I'm not I'm not too sure if this AI bot was added in later or if it was added at the time of the question in 2015. I have to do a little bit more digging on that. Amazing but, now an AI, an AI bot can be so descriptive, and then with an answer, right? Yeah, that that's very very weird. Almost like there some what if what if they're watching us? Like what if something's watching us? and inserting that information what if it's not a human consciousness that's doing it but anyway that's another theory but um right here we can see on twitter um this post by joy you know she says people on my timeline are watching the movie labyrinth and the movie jurassic park and i'm not watching either but i'm enjoying all the nerdy delight and then here's this person melissa sawmiller she writes two of my top five meaning the movies labyrinth and jurassic park two of my top five movies the Lion King 2014 version <laughs> is my favorite. <laughs> what? Look at that. Like, what is that? So she she saw it with you. <laughs> she probably sat next to you in the theater. <laughs> Dude, so I found this on Twitter, right? I'm like, wow, what in the world? So somebody else remembers it just like I do. 2014. And, you know, this is something interesting, again, like with the residue. If you if somebody puts it in parentheses, or they put it in uh, quotation marks on both sides, it remains the old way. But once you take away the parentheses and the uh, quotation marks, once you take away that layer, it it becomes affected or it becomes susceptible to change by the update mm. of, what, of what's changing and what's causing you know what's causing the Mandela effect. So. Mm. I, you know, if this wasn't protected by these parentheses, maybe this would have said 2019 when really she, she wrote 2014. But because it is in parentheses, it remains as residue of 2014. And, you know, a lot of people say, well, maybe she just mistyped the number. But if you look at your keyboard right now, the number four and the number nine on your keyboard are entirely different sides of the keyboard. There are, you know, if you were to draw a line down the middle of the keyboard, four is way over here. If she were to mistype it, she would have hit five or or three. No, she hit four, not nine. So she remembers 2014 for sure. So th this is uh, this is some interesting um, type of residue. Um, and mind then, blown. What was that? Mind blown. I mean, dude, this is uh, – and then I found this as well. It's like a fan casting page. And that's what's weird is that this this uh, this fan casting suggestion was made on October 21st of 2021. But what's weird is they put the Lion King and then again in parentheses with the parentheses again 2014. And down here, you know, you have this. This is from you know this is so the same character makeup is like it's exactly kind of like the same way I remember. Maybe the lighting was a little different, but the same CGI live action type of uh, movie is what I remember like this right here. And but they're putting The Lion King 2014 right here. Um, and again, you know, the number four and the number nine, they're 
they're nowhere near each other on the keyboard. So that's something you got to think about if you're trying to uh, say, well, maybe, you know, it's just a mistype, you know. And, you know, again here, yeah, same thing, uh, same website, Fancasting, you know, Lion King 2014. That's... It's very strange. Um, and then here's the, you know, here's the page here that I was talking about. Um, this is what I found. So when I go to search for like residue on Google or whatever, uh, I put it in quotation marks. I put it in like parentheses or quotation marks and I hit search. So when I hit search for the Lion King 2014, this is what I got. Uh, there, there's like a fandom page. And it says the Lion King, and then it has it in parentheses, 2014 film and credits. But what's weird is when I first searched this, it had all the information of all the characters and whatnot. And now it just has what you see here. It, it's completely erased. And down here is, you know, it says 2014 theatrical release. And it even has a serial number. What This is the serial number that I looked for that I typed in. 49138 I typed that in and it gave me a res you know it gave me the uh so when you hit search it takes you directly to where that movie is and where it came out when I put that number in number 49138 it gave me to be announced TBA to be announced so it's like I couldn't uh figure out what it was because the movie hasn't even come out yet but it's like the 2014 version hasn't come out yet it came out in a different reality. So it's like, it's, it's like, it's to be announced in this reality, but in another reality, it's not to be announced. It already came out. So it, this whole, this whole uh, serial number is just so weird. Cause why would, why would all this information, all this detail be here on this page for a movie that now is supposedly always came out in 2019. It's so weird. So weird. So after all this digging, what is your conclusion? Um, so I don't know. I, it's just, I'm trying to figure out like, it's like, are we living in like a type of, like a type of dream, you know, like, a, is this like a dream, you know, where you go to bed you wake up and it's a different timeline, you know, where it's like, it's no longer 2014 now in this timeline, it's 2019. And it's like, but then like, then again, you know, I kind of go back to like what Brian was saying, like, how do you explain the residue being here? Um, it, it, it is here. The residue is here. It's just that now it's like, it's always been a different date now that the movie's released. So I've been trying to figure out like, could we be like a dream within a dream type of like a like where we're like the place where we live like is it like a dream reality are we in the mind of god and god is kind of like shifting some things around in his in his mind and that's what's going on kind of like you know like in a computer where it shifts code around in order to organize it like are we in the mind of god in this reality is his dream and like we're we're living in that dream and the dream is very malleable. You know, that's, you know, like when you're like, when you go to bed and you dream at night, you can like go through walls or whatever, you know, you could float or feel like you're falling or you're flying. Um, it, I don't know. It, it does have a lot of, uh, you know, credible points to that theory, you know, that it's like a dream reality or mind of God kind of. But then, you know, there's other people that will say, you know, it's like a simulation and we're just ones and zeros, which I never really vibed with, you know, because uh, I don't think God is ones and zeros. You know, I, I don't think God is digital. I think God is spiritual and we're spirit beings. And if we're created in the image of God, then we'd be spirit as well. He's spirit. You know, he's a spirit being. We're, we're spirit beings and we can connect on that same wavelength. So I don't think it's a digital wavelength, you know, it's a spiritual wavelength, but, uh, but yeah, just trying to figure out like this whole, like what, what's going on, because I think that the personal changes our personal change, you know, Mandela effects, it might help us get closer to try to figure out like what, what this place is or what's causing the Mandela effect. 
even though we might not figure it out now or tonight or whatever, the personal change Mandela effects, I think might help give us a little piece of the puzzle to kind of like give us like a nudge into a right direction kind of, so to speak, you know? So <clears throat> we're either spiritual or digital, right? Is that what you're saying? You can't, we can't be both. It can't be spiritual and digital at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. No, I don't, I don't, I mean, you could say that they both have like similar characteristics and attributes, you know, with the digital being, um, you know, you can't really touch a digital one or a digital zero, but we are, we are electromagnetic beings. Yeah, we are. Let's yeah, exactly. So, so that's, a, that's a nod for digital, right? Like, uh, like, a right. Okay. Yeah. But I also see electrical as spiritual as well, too. So you could kind of make an argument the other way as well. But I don't think we're like in a computer, like some mad scientist computer where like we're created by, you know, a person that's uh, ones and zeros. I think that person who created us is like definitely beyond ones and zeros for sure, you know, beyond what you know what we think is so I, I i do think like since we're created in the image of the creator we have the same attributes as the creator um when it comes to our makeup when it comes to the spiritual makeup of our of our being um the physical passes away but the spiritual you know that lives on so i i really feel that it it, it can't be digital because I, I feel like you know there's many people like, you know, CERN and whatnot that would like to make you think that it's them doing it, it's them causing it, or it's a D-wave scientist somewhere that's creating, you know, realities and messing with it. But I, I yeah, I just really didn't go down that, that theory. Um, a reality does update, though, similar to a, a, a software update. Don't you, wouldn't you agree? Yeah, yeah, I, I, agree, I agree with that. But um, it's like the way you look at it, it could also be spiritual update as well um, with the creators spiritually updating the reality. Um, so it, you can kind of see it both ways, but um, when it comes down to it, uh, just my you know personal opinion or theory is that it's, you know, it's spiritual, not digital for sure. <clears throat> All right. Well, you're joining John, Jonathan and I on this episode of we're not in Kansas anymore. Where are we? I, we don't know. We don't know the answers. If you clicked on this video thinking that we're going to tell you the answers, we just have speculations, guys. We have thoughts and uh, proof as well. You know, John just showed much proof about the Lion King. That's wild. 2014 to now 2019. And you were there with your family. It's not like you went by yourself and you're like this delusional, like, you know, you made it up. No, you went with your family. So they can attest to it as well. <clears throat> That's wild. Thank you for joining. We're going to take another break. And uh, after the break, we'll just wrap up real quick. Uh, thanks, everybody. And uh, we'll catch you after the break. <laughs> Have you ever looked away from Earth into the black void? Yeah. As you can see the stars. Oh yeah. And, you know, and, and, uh, we were never able to see stars from the lunar surface or on the daylight side of the moon. It's not it's black white. Cool I mean, it's black, but there's all kinds of polka dots. Space is filled with stars. Space is
gotta play the didgeridoo. Destroyed all the papers and blew up the challenger crew. Except for the twins, it's young. smell a little roast beef. Where are the stars? Is it bright or is it dark? The vacuum of space or the dawn of flurry? I think Sandy's hair is pretty much a dead giveaway. What happens if you get a leak on that? Um, you have a leak. throw a pigskin a quarter mile. Are you serious? I'm dead serious. Watch this. Ah! What the heck are you doing? When Mandela affected I don't know where the duck goes Mandela affected. Oh no. I said we going Mandela affected. I don't know where the duck goes. And we all affected. Oh no. I said daydreamer dreaming. They said I'm just a daydreamer dreaming. With my head always motherfucking in the ceiling. When it seems that the shoes got that neck sense. Y'all ain't really fucking see y'all affects it. But Six holes in your fucking face, man What is you been sleeping? No one has mistaken me for logically frustrated Cause now I know that there's always been six people seated In the JFK assassination But of course all the vets know let's go where it went Logically frosty, he shouldn't be like this Honestly, he should be cold as shit Why's he need a scarf and what's the point of it? Be careful what you wish for in the major slash Where I'm fucking from wasn't like this, but at least it's nice to know I'm not alone in ships. When Mandela affected, I don't know where the duck goes. Mandela affected, oh no. I said we going Mandela affected, I don't know where the duck goes. And we ships, 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 oh no. I said they do shifty bastards, your wrists are tattered As your pulse is under your thumb, no longer centered You're shrinking back to here and after Not even talking that quick, it's just the time is moving faster You're lost in the facts since reality's hack bitch Like summoning demons with these dancing tactics Like Sam Psychiatric, blending some magic Losing your stars and stripes as the demons demanded Running in circles, but to whose advantage? It's a sense from the creators while on Satan's sandwich no longer get scared from Ricky Ricardo's laughter In fact, I slap a bitch just to hear someone in the chatter Like someone in a bar quoting it like it matters Cause this isn't my home, it's a plain and disaster How the fuck could this be? Someone tell me, yo, can I say? When Mandela affected, I don't know where the duck goes Mandela affected, oh no I said we going Mandela all right.
right. <clears throat> well, we had a great stream. Um, I'm very enlightened by all that you shared, and, I, and I'm sure our audience is enlightened as well. That Lion King thing still blows my mind. Like, I'm picturing you sitting in a theater watching the live Lion King in 2014 when that could not be possible because it came out in 2019. So did you just step into some warp zone during that moment and you just like traveled to this future theater in 2019, <laughs> sitting in there watching it? I don't know. Dude. Yeah, it's, uh, man, I, but yeah, it's like, I have such a strong, like, that was my reality. It, it, it was my reality. And now it's completely different. Uh, did you ever go? Did you ever see the movie? Did you ever uh, go see it? No, I didn't. I do remember it coming out, the, the live version coming out in 2019, though. Oh, you so, never, did you ever see it? In the theater? I also have a memory of the animated version being re released. I don't know when, what year, but before the live version. Yeah, and you think they would do it perfectly on the 20th anniversary, right? Like 2014. But no, they, they didn't. It's so weird. So, um, Jonathan, before we go, uh, what do you have um, in store? What are your future plans for your channel? Um, anybody out there, can you um, post up uh, the link to Blue Pac-Man's channel? Um, yeah, well, what do you have uh, lined up? Uh, I just have a couple of videos lined up. They're uh, Isaiah eleven six videos, and uh, one of them kind of like talks about Jerusalem. So the next video will probably be uh, about Jerusalem and residue over there. Uh, and then another video might be uh, another pastor video, or I might do a you know I might do another another video where it's kind of like talking about like a like a name change um, or video or whatever but uh, i like to do live streams with people so um i like to uh hop on you know so i'm going to start doing that more a little in the future you know start hopping on share ideas uh meet other people online uh, that's pretty much it cool definitely chime in into jonathan's um channel he has great footage um especially scripture because, I mean, the Mandela effect will be bold enough to hop into the scripture realm and change it. Not one, not two, not three, not four, but many, many verses in your Bible. Yeah, and I do cover other other uh, topics. You know, I cover other changes, like, uh, like the one I just did recently. I'm not sure if you've seen it, but it's the Hello Clarice one, um, where basically you have the film editor, you have the actor, and then you also have this animatronic that was made like in 2008, where they all have residue for it being Hello Clarice from the movie Silence of the Lambs, 1991. And, you know, it's, it's, and it's really, really strange because you have the film editor who sat there at his Steenbeck machine editing the movie, the, the movie that was going to be released to theaters. He's editing the movie and the first footage that was shot from the movie came rolling through the machine and it's um, Anthony Hopkins standing there and he's saying, hello, Clarice. And so I have that in the video where the film editor twice remembers it as hello, Clarice. But when you watch the movie, he doesn't say it at all. He doesn't, you know, there's no hello, Clarice now in the movie. He just says good morning, which is, you know, very strange. And many people remember his back being turned but now he's standing right in front and he's saying just good morning, which is totally you know, not that scary at all. Not scary at all. <laughs> so good morning. Good morning. Like, hey, how's it going? Good morning. How did you see yeah. <laughs> It's not, hello, Clary. <laughs> yeah, and you have, so you have the film editor that remembers it. You have the actor himself twice remembers it being hello, Clarice. And then there's this very detailed, very well-constructed animatronic that came out in 2008 which has a tag on it that says Silence of the Lamb. So specifically referencing the original movie uh, from 1991. And so in, in the animatronic, they put Hello Clarice. And all the other quotes inside the animatronic 
are from the movie that you can verify. But that one, that one quote in the animatronic doesn't exist now in the movie at all. So it's very, very strange. And the residue is very, very uh, profound for that one as well. Yeah. All right. I think we're uh, hitting to the end. Um, before we wrap things up, thank you, Jonathan, for joining um, uh, your first time on Hue TV. Uh, I thank hope it's too uh, nerve wracking for you. It went by pretty right. quick, right? Yeah, I know. that's good. We, I, yeah, I, I feel like I could go a little longer, but yeah, this this was really good. You know, we shot a lot of theories. You know, we could be here a long time going with uh, going through the list of theories. We could be here forever, but it's good just to kind of like you know shoot some theories, you know, off the hip, you know, and just see kind of like where we're at, um, you know, sharing our ideas, you know, and it really helps us, you know, help each other, you know, figuring out what this place could be, one step yeah. closer, you know. And you know what? We're not in Kansas anymore. No, we're, we're not. not. <laughs> We've traveled somewhere, somewhere, and you know what? We're constantly traveling. Don't you agree? Where things are constantly changing. Yeah, we're you constantly know? flowing. <laughs> constantly. So try not to uh, get worried. Uh, just go with it, accept it, and have fun. Enjoy it. Yeah, Don't we got. Yeah, that's another thing, you know, like, man, we do a lot of, you know, research into the truth, whatever it is, you know, like Mandela Effect or Flat Earth or 9-11 or whatever. But it's good just to kind of like take time to kind of have some balance in your life and just go out, go for a hike, maybe go for like a little nature walk and just kind of like, you know, get back to that recovering energy, you know, get back to that like healing energy where it's just like you're emptying, you're emptying your mind, you're emptying your thoughts and you're just kind of like getting that balance, you know? That's right. Get out there, guys. Do new things. Get out in nature and uh, unplug and uh, unwind. Get disconnected. Please. I know the truth. We, we, we get it online on YouTube constantly. There's always another video, another live stream to watch. But you know what? There's a point in time where it just does not become healthy. You got to disconnect and just get outside. Talk to another human being in person. Get that energy from them. There's, there's, a, there's a energy sharing. Uh, and, and we get that energy here over digital, but it's not the same. Yeah, it's, it's more, man, yeah, definitely it's not the same. You know, it's more spiritual when you meet people in person. And it's just that different feeling. You can't really describe it, put it into words. It's, uh, it's healing. It's very healing. Yeah, and maybe this is a, a great time for you to, uh, to mend relationships that were broken, maybe during the days of COVID. Uh, people are more open-minded. People aren't wearing the mask as much as before so you we can have that face-to-face -face interaction definitely um, please do that so uh thank you jonathan um for joining on this episode of hue tv we're not in kansas anymore we're still figuring it out and uh and jonathan when you have more speculations more theories please come back onto this uh channel and uh, we will discuss it awesome definitely 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 will uh thank you huge thank you thank you uh this is um really good that we can have a talk and just shoot the ideas and uh definitely we can uh do another live stream and maybe do a part two or just kind of see where it goes from here all right guys we'll see you on the next one thanks Peace.